Way to be married. Thank you, Johan. Friends, family, we are gathered here to celebrate the marriage of Shivani Gerg and Joel Mark Nicholas. To share in their joy, to celebrate with them. We're also joined with friends and family all around the world. So we're turning the cameras on you so you can say hello to them. For the many people who would be here. There you go. Say hello. Hello to friends and family who would be with us but can't be with us today or are going to watch this later. Friends, we are gathered here in Jesus' name because it is Jesus who has drawn this couple together. And it is in His name they will be married today. And so what better way to start our celebrations this day in singing in worship. So let's sing together. How can we not give praise?
Spirit, let your fire now run wild by your Spirit. We have overcome. Let your church rise. Spirit, let your fire Simeon, would you come and read for us? Are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remained in his love. I have told you this so that that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. If you did, not, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. We have come together in God's presence, in the presence of our one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for the marriage of Shivani Gary and for Joel, Mark, Nicholas, to share their joy 
and to promise them our support and love. Marriage is a gift of God and a means of His grace, His love to us. And in the lifelong union of marriage, we can know the joy of God who made us in His own image, male and female. Marriage is founded in God's loving nature and in His covenant, His promise of love for us in Jesus Christ. And husband and wife, in giving themselves to each other, reflect the love that Jesus has for His church. In Christian marriage, wife and husband are called to live faithfully together, to love each other with respect, tenderness, and delight. And the companionship and comfort of marriage enable the full expression of physical love between a husband and wife. Amen. They share the life of a home and may be entrusted with the gift and care of children. They help to shape a society in which human dignity and happiness may flourish and abound. Our Lord Jesus Christ was Himself a guest at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. He made quite a difference that day, and He is with us by His Spirit to enrich our love and give us his peace, and his joy. May we pray together. Dear Father God, we thank you so much for this joyous day. We thank you for the love that has grown between Joel and Shivani. We thank you for all of the good things that have happened in their lives. But of course, we gather here as people who remember them in those first moments. As Joel's papa wrote, a three-way meeting, a demi-cell of his meets one of hers, and a touch of divinity, that transient spark of a happening, may anchor into this world of time. For their life began, and then a heart began to beat, secure and nurtured, suspended within a warm sea of love, to grow isolated except from sound, and except, of course, from your presence. So we thank you, Father for the love and nurture that's been poured into Joel and Shivani's life, for Johan and Melanie, for Diane, and I put in a shift as well, <laughs> for friends and family all over the world whose love and practical support has made this day possible in nurture and care, in resourcing, in teaching and mentoring, in friendship, in fellowship. Father, we thank you for all of those who have a part in the celebrations today, both those who are here, those who are watching on their televisions and mobile devices, and those who went before us. For marriage is one of your great gifts to us, Father, one of your greatest gifts right there in the beginning of Genesis, that a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And Father, as Simeon was reading, if you remain in me, you'll bear fruit, and you made us to be fruitful, to have children, to bring them up in your love, to teach them how to live a fruitful life. And we pray that, Father, as Joel and Shivani get ready to make their vows to one another. For as Jondre will read later, with us, love one another, for love comes from God. And Father, it's by your wisdom a house is built through understanding it's established, so it says in your word. And we pray that you would guide them, give them principles, deep roots with which to bed in. Father, we thank you so much for 24 years, near 25 tomorrow, is too short a time to spend amongst such estimable siblings with Jeandre and Emily, with Mavaldu, Javan and Joshua, and near 28 years, too short a time to spend with such estimable Nathans and Allies, Keziahs, Simeons, Talithas, Zacharies, Ashers, Gabriels, and Lachlans. <laughs> and counting. For love never fails. 
Love never fails. From generation to generation, the blessings are passed down as we see and acknowledge and in ways that we can barely begin to understand until we ourselves enter into your keeping and discover those whose heroic efforts meant that we could live the life that you have given us. So may your hope be in us today. Hope for a rain-free wedding from here on in. And Galladay. For all the organization to go well, we pray, Father, your blessing on tech teams and cooking teams and setup teams. We pray your blessings on bands and power supplies and all the things that may and can go wrong. But most of all, we pray that we would all recognize your presence in our midst and that we may overflow with your hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, bless us. Keep us. May your face shine upon us this day. Whether we know you for ourselves or we're still uncertain of you and your love for us, may we all see your hand in this wedding today. For marriage was your idea. And we pray this will be loving, lifelong. And the vows taken today will resonate through the days, months, years, and centuries to come. So, Father, this day, let us love one another, for love comes from God. And, Jesus, we thank you, because you have underwritten this all by your life, your death, and your resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As a seal of the vows that you are about to take, Joel and Shivane, would you please join hands? Joel, would you please repeat after me if you are ready? Absolutely. In the presence of God, and before these witnesses, <clears throat> before these witnesses, I, Joel, I, Joel, give myself to you, Shivani, give myself to you, Shivani, to be your husband, to be your husband. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I take you now, I take you now, to be my wife, to be my wife. I promise to love you, I promise to love you. To be faithful and loyal to you. To be faithful and loyal to you. For as long as we live. For as long as we live. Shivane, are you ready? Please repeat after me. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. And before these witnesses. And before these witnesses. I, Shivane. I, Shivane. Give myself to you, Joel. Give myself to you, John. To be your wife. To be your wife. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I take you now. I take you now. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. To be faithful and loyal to you. To be faithful and loyal to you. For as long as we live. For as long as we live. As a token of the covenant into which you have entered, these rings are given and received. May they be a sign of the unending love that you have pledged to each other this day. Do we have a plumber? Ah, there we go. <laughs> Joel, would you take the ring that you have chosen for Shivane and please repeat after me. Shivane, I give you this ring in Jesus' name. Shivane, I give you this ring in Jesus' name. As a symbol of all that we have promised. As a symbol of all that we've promised. And all that we shall share. And all that we shall share. Shivane, would you take the ring that you have chosen for Joel? She'll be able to do it a bit better. <laughs> oh, well done. 
Would you place it on Joel's finger and please repeat after me. Joel, I give you this ring in Jesus' name. Joel, I give you this ring in Jesus' name. As a symbol of all that we have promised. As a symbol of all that we have promised. And all that we shall share. And all that we shall share. <laughs> By this sign you have each other. You take each other. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish for as long as you live. And since you have covenanted together in marriage before God and these witnesses, your friends and family gathered here, I now have great, the great pleasure and privilege to proclaim you husband and wife in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And may the joy of God rest upon you, the peace of God rest upon you now and forevermore. Now, Keziah, could you tap the next slide? Because I'm busy here. <laughs> Melanie was asking if we have a Scots blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto Now kiss your bride. Hey! <laughs> yes. Bless you guys. <laughs> Love you, Dad. Love you so much. Now. Church, let's worship. Are you in good voice? On your feet. Just while our drummer is getting ready and our bassist is getting ready, I know that some of the songs this morning, we will this afternoon, you'll not recognize. But if we sung the songs you recognize, you might think we're still singing the same hymns that you were singing when you were at school. And we do sometimes, but not often. David dance in the thrill of a wild romance. I'm in love and I'm not ashamed. Love's a fire that won't be tamed. And oh, oh my soul was not born to be caged. And 
And I will praise the Lord my God with all my light. And I will leave my pride behind. And I will praise the Lord my God with all my light. Now I won't fall back, I won't hold out. I won't care what the world may say. I'm a back into reckless praise and love of my soul. When you bow to the fear.
across the pages of time you made every living thing behold him you heard humanity's cry left his throne to wake as a child he became like the least of us behold Zero. 
eternity. Worthy, worthy, worthy to receive all praise. Let's hear you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy, worthy, worthy to receive all praise. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy, worthy, worthy to receive all Praise you, Jesus. Men of the tech team, we should be seeing a video just now. From 1 the readings taken from 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 to 8. Love. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith and can move mountains, but not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Thank you, Sune. Now it's time for the register to be signed. Would you like to come with me? Mm -hmm. 
I muted myself and said, in case I said anything incriminating. So, we've done the signing of the register, have we not? But those of you who are proofreaders will have been having a look at your orders and going, what on earth does the word getting mean? Well, we've got Afrikaans people here. What does the word getting mean? 
Well done. Thank you, Gert. Dirk, yes. We have a poem. Stuart and Carol, would you come and share with us, please? Wedding present, <laughs> specially written for you by Stuart and only finished a few days ago, gifted to you as a wedding present. And for my most favorite INTP in the world, Joel. <laughs> and for the most beautiful, beautiful bride and soon to be birthday new wife, Shivani. This is for you. We've, we're doing it in, as it were, your two voices and bringing your two worlds together. This be the day. High summer hallowed. Airborne as the spinning swallow with the hallelujah bee enthroned in her palace as the woods and shores gift their garland gems, the marsh marigold and the bilberry, for this be the chapter one day. Linen white lucid, unblemished immaculate, the infinite archway, our anointed overture, when I bring the intent bounty of my heart, to the translucent altar of yours. This be the day, miraculous as the glass wing butterfly and the night sheen of stars. For though we were born a broad ocean apart, divine navigation brought us ashore. And this be the day vast in communion, when ones become one. The harebell and the protea, the glen and the veldt, the capercaillie and the malachite kingfisher. For this be the day of the sacred festival, the mystical Cayley, the blissful becoming. And this be the day with our sacrosanct saviour, magical weddings being his speciality, when we pledge the bracing best wine of service and sacrifice to each other. As we then take to the floor, for how could we not the gleeful Messiah is dancing. And we only have to follow his abiding steps. Amen. Jondre, would you come and read to us from the letter of 1 John? Thank you. I have to follow that. <laughs> Five minutes. I'm still getting used to this whole thing. <laughs> I must say it's been one of the most liberating experiences I've ever had. <laughs> I think my wife's going to like it too. So I was asked to do the reading, but being a son of a pastor, one verse makes you think of another one and another one, and then before you know it, you have a sermon. And then I remembered, I think they asked me to do a reading. So I thought if I could read them all together, that might count. 
but I just settled on two verses that I feel encompasses the whole of divinity and love. And it's 1 John 4, verse 7 and 8. Beloved, love always includes others, since love brings, springs from God. Its source is found in the fellowship of the Father, Spirit, and Son. Everyone who encounters love immediately knows that they too are born of the same source. It is not possible to fully participate in love without discovering God. To love is to know God. To know God is to love. Not to love is not to know God. There is nothing in love that distracts from who God is. Love is who God is. They are inseparable. So Shiva and Angel, may the love you have for each other continue to reveal more of God to you. And may the continual discovery of God in turn deepen your experience of love that you may experience the infinite divinity and love in and around you and through your relationship till the end. Amen. Amen. Johan, come share with us, brother. So Joe said, I'll give you 15,000 pounds if you make it short. <laughs> but I know he can't afford it, so it's not going to be short. <laughs> because they just bought a house. Yeah, they don't take things in small measures. They just leap into it, which is awesome. You know what that song we sang about the Lion of Judah? Man, it just became so real to me because we actually experienced the Lion of Judah in our midst, like it said. Can you just talk? We want to hear the lion roar. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough right now. <laughs> I mean, uh, we just sang, you know, God is here, and, and, and He is. You know, just look around and you will see Him. Um, in every person that is here today, a part of God was deposited to manifest Himself to a human a race to see what God looks like in the flesh. And you know, it is so true. When we sang about the beauty, the splendor of God, I just looked at myself and I thought. <laughs> that something like this can produce so a beautiful daughter. I'm so glad she looks like a mom and not like me. Otherwise, we had to dress her nicely. But anyway, there's something you need to know about Joe. Uh, when they asked me to be part of this sermon, I, I actually thought, you know, it would be nice one day if I can just attend a, a wedding. <laughs> because I do so many. But if it's your only daughter, then you just want to be part of it. And... I want to share something with you about Joe. Okay. Now we're going to do something all together today and as we go into the functions after this, I want you to repeat these words after me. One more thing. Can you say that? Okay. Because this is how it all started. You see, my daughter decided she's going to bless her twin brothers for their birthday to come to Edinburgh. Now, I don't know who organized this and who, what the hidden agenda was, but all of a sudden, Keziah was involved in it as well, 
And then it was no longer the brothers that had been taken out. It's now going to visit another family that has got... How many children now? What did you say, Mark? Eight. Eight. And already I thought, okay, here's something interesting, because I went on to Facebook. <laughs> because if your children go away for a weekend, follow Facebook. <laughs> they have a tendency to, to post everything there, or on Instagram. And I saw this bearded man. <laughs> and the first question I asked her when she came back, I said, um, who's the guy with the beard? And she said, Daddy, we need to talk. <laughs> and I said, no, there is no conversation. I mean, he's got red hair and a red beard. And then I was made quiet because my wife said, that was what I prayed for. <laughs> but I want to take you back, Joel and Shivani. You know, your sister organized now for you to go to the zoo. Not to go and see the animals there, but actually that you would maybe discover such a queen, you know, walking in the zoo. And you did. But you made the biggest, biggest mistake ever that you will never forget after today. One thing, Joel, you had to do that day. One thing. Just one thing. You had to get her number, and you never did. <laughs> so his sister asked him, Joel, did you get it? Get what? Her number. So then he had to, via his sister, get her number. The one thing, John, <laughs> the one thing. But you know what? Soon after, it was not only the one thing, because then we had the privilege to meet this young man, which I now can call my son. And it's not the son-in-law. He's a son by grace. God gifted us today with a son. I haven't lost a daughter, I gained a son. And it is such an honor to, to have seen you two, you know, falling in love and just started to walk this road. And I thought the best to explain this to you is the scripture that was read, 1 Corinthians 13. And this is how we will remember this weekend. One more thing. The one thing that you had to do became more things. One more thing. So, can you say it with me? One more thing. One more thing. And this is in First Corinthians, and I'm going to read out of the, the mirror translation, and it says this. Speaking in tongues is not the point. Love is. It's neither celestial, angelic eloquence, nor the mastery of human language that persuades. It doesn't matter how poetic, how prophetic, or how profound I may sound, my conversation is reduced to the hollow noise of clanging brass cymbals if love's echo is absent. Here's the wonderful thing about the word love. Now, understand me, I am a Hebrew and Greek scholar, so I love Hebrew, what Liam has found out. I love the, uh, I just love going into the ancient Hebrew. And the word um, agape, for love, if you go back and you uh, uh, look further into it, you will find that the word agape comes from two words, agao and pau. And... This is what it means. Agao means to lead like a shepherd leads his sheep. Agao, well, like I said, like a shepherd leads a sheep. Pau means to rest. 
So love actually means you leading someone to a place of rest so that you can discover and help them discover so that they can find out who they really are. And that's Psalm 23. When he says he leads us beside still waters, and we had some very interesting conversations about this already. Let me refresh our minds. When God leads us like a shepherd to still waters, he actually brings us to a place where we can remember who we really are. And Joe, for 20 years, I've tried to make my wife become what I wanted her to be. It doesn't work. (laughs) Okay, let me help you. Uh, It never worked. It will never work because we can never make any person like we want them to be. All we need to do is help them discover who they really are. It's the same, Shivane. You can never change him. Never. We can never change each other. But we can absolutely help each other in discovering who we really are in Christ. That which he had for us from the beginning to be together. That which he planned for us from the beginning. Orchestrating this. And I love that poem, you know, how God can bring people over oceans. Um, Emily and and, and Jandre had the same experience. So the other ones, can you just follow this example, get a bit closer? (laughs) So... God's plan for the, for the marriage was never for us to, to change each other, but to help each other dis, to discover who we really are in him. So, one more thing. If I could predict the future in detail and have a word of knowledge for everyone, if I could possess amazing faith, like we sang, and prove it by moving mountains, He doesn't make me any more important than anyone else. Love is who you are. You are not defined by your gifts or deeds. And it's something I had to discover in my marriage. You know, when you you grow up in a certain way and you've experienced life in a certain way, you think that is how it should be. Now, there's, there's there's a few things that is so profound in, in how you two found each other, discovered each other, and, you know, it's actually not necessary for me to preach to, today to, to you guys, because you are a perfect son of a perfect pastor and his wife, and she's a perfect daughter of a perfect pastor and his wife. <laughs> You know, the, the vicar was one day asked, he said, um, they brought him before the committee of the elders. And they said, Pastor, vicar, we have an issue with your children. They are very naughty. They become very rude. And the vicar said, he says, my children were perfect until they made yours. <laughs> but here's the wonderful thing that you... You two can start off with all these wonderful friends and family around you today, with all those that are watching that could not make it today, and help each other discover. One more thing, Joel and Shivane. Love is not about defending a point of view. Even if I am prepared to give away everything I have and die a martyr's death, love does not prove itself by acts of supreme devotion or self-sacrifice. We've got nothing to prove. We have just got something to experience and enjoy. And may this be for you too, that you will experience that joy, that excitement every day, you know, I was asked the question, have you ever been sorry that you married your wife? I said, many times, many times. <laughs> sorry, I didn't do it earlier. Because 
You know what? If you really start discovering who you are and your wife discovers who she is, life is a bliss. Marriage is a bliss. And then you realize, I don't have to compete. We complete each other. And thank God for the grace in Jesus that brought that completion. Love is large in being passionate about life and relentlessly patient in bearing the offenses and injuries of others with kindness. Love is completely content and strives for nothing. Because love has no desire to make others feel inferior and has no need to sing its own praises. You know, I always ask couples when they start arguing and doing all kinds of things. If the person next to you is God's address. You see God's image, you see God's likeness. She sees God's image, she sees God's likeness. If you have a problem with the person, you actually have a problem with God's image and likeness. Think about that one. Love is predictable and does not behave out of character. Love is not ambitious. Love is not spiteful and gets no mileage out of others' mistakes and bears no records of wrong. Somebody once told me, a good friend is somebody that can see through you and still enjoy the view. It's somebody that can see through all your shortages, all your mistakes, but still enjoy the view. And, and it's true, you're going to find shortages, shortages in her, and likewise in him. But the wonderful thing is, you can enjoy the view. You can enjoy the view. And this, I'm going to finish with this. Love is a fortress where everyone feels protected rather than exposed. Love's persuasion is persistent. Love believes. Love never loses hope and always remains in constant contradiction. And I love this. Love never loses its altitude. It never stops soaring. And may you too experience that every day. That your life and your love for one another will just soar and soar and soar. Okay? So, I think, no, wait, what did we say? One more thing. One more thing. <laughs> Seeing that it's a favorite TV show, um, what was the guy with the cigar? Colombo. <laughs> she loved Colombo, especially when her brother puts it on, you know, and watches Colombo. Really? Is that what we need to watch again? <laughs> Couldn't stand it. But one more thing. <laughs> From this day forward, you are our children. We've gained family. I can no longer look at um, any of your family and say friends, because now we're family. So we have become part of one another's lives. Okay. So let's enjoy this extended family. The, the wonderful thing is that we've now got a Nicholas in the family. So I'm looking forward to Christmas. <laughs> oh, we've just got to find out who's, who's, who, who must get the title Saint. Saint. Now there's two Nicholases, so that means the, the, the presents will come faster at Christmas time. <laughs> okay, so I think that is all for today that I'm going to... No, wait. One, One more, more thing. thing. One more thing. Eight children, five children. No. Anywhere in between. You've got to follow two good men's examples. Come on. <laughs> no. 
what an awesome pleasure to have been with you today, to share with you, and uh, to be part of this awesome day. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Mark. Now, wonderful. Matt, Brian, would you come forward and pray with a couple? And then we've got just one more thing. I decided to write, I decided to write my prayer down because if I didn't, I'd probably be longer than one or two other people who have been today. So I just wanted to, to write this down. So let's all pray. Lord Jesus, as this couple begin their lives together, I pray that their hearts will unite as one with you in their desire to meet you the center. May this day be the start of something very special, a celebration unlike any other. As they have offered their vows to one another in your sight and others, give them a clear understanding of their commitment to each other. May their loyalty and marriage reflect their own love and faithfulness to you and all your children. Let them know that two are better than one as they mutually invest and depend on each other, but that the third strand of their marriage is always you. May their love, like the wedding rings they, have, they wear now, be a circle that never ends. Grow that love relationship into one that is patient and kind, not boastful or proud, one that is unselfish and trusting, and a love that protects and preserves through every season of their lives. I pray you will give this couple unforgettable moments, unending dedication, unselfish motives as they pledge their devotion to each other. In every possible way, make their house they build together a godly home, a place where hearts are healed with grace, a place where emotions feel safe when shared with honesty and gentleness, a place where hearts are sealed with forgiveness. Keep their communication open with you and each other as they make prayers, prayer a constant priority. Lord, today and every day, let laughter echo in their hearts and home. Let joy fill every room and let your face shine on them. Bless them and give them gracious peace that passes all understanding. May they love you with all their heart, soul and strength. Help them to bear each other's burdens as they cast their cares on you. May they always choose to see the best in each other, even through the tough times. May they see their marriage as more than two lives coming together, but as two with one mission for you. Lord, a lighthouse of refuge, a welcome place for encouragement, a testimony to your power and grace. Help them to cherish this day as a sacred moment and their union as a treasure to protect at all costs. Make it a reminder of hope that keeps on going and faith that keeps on growing. Help them believe that all things are possible through Christ, the one who began this work in them. Lord, in this day, may every word spoken and every precious token remind them of the one who holds all things together and makes all things good. As this couple stands side by side and hand in hand, hold them tight and never let them go. Fill their hearts with unceasing gratitude by their vision, their strength, and their constant companionship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so, uh, just very quickly, when Chevenet asked me to, to do this, I had one thought that came through so strong, and that was just gratefulness. Um, so my prayer is a prayer of gratefulness uh, over you guys. And <clears throat> it really reminded me that the verse, uh, Psalm 95, verse 2, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Um, so, Father, uh, today we just are thankful. We are so grateful. We are grateful for who you are. We are grateful for uh, love, that your love manifested uh, in creation, in relationships. Um, and so, therefore, in the first thing we do is we say thank you. We are so grateful. And, Father, uh, I'm grateful for the path that has led uh, these two to this moment that you have put people in their lives to mentor them, to guide them, uh, and you have put your character in them. And for that, we are so grateful. Father, we are grateful we can come together as a wider family to celebrate, to enjoy, and that this is a day for all of us 
to come together to show our thanks. I thank you that in uniting these two, it is now greater than the sum of the individual parts, that the path you have for these two as one, it will now influence and impact this community. So we are grateful that your walk with them carries on, but it carries on with them as a family. And the final part of my prayer is a prompt in Holy Spirit that you would prompt them to constantly be grateful for each other. It is easy to be grateful in the good times, but may they have a constant heart of gratitude towards each other in the challenging times as well. That as it says here, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. I pray of your marriage that every day you come into each other's presence with gratefulness and thanksgiving for who God is and for who each other are to you. Father, we just say thank you. We are grateful for who you are, what you have done today, and for that constant prompting and reminding to be grateful for each other. Amen. 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 Let's stand. Let's worship.
Was that a sheep? (laughs) That was very biblical. No. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. and Mrs. Nicholas. (laughs) Now, just wait there a moment. Bethan, if you can click the next slide, we'll speak this blessing over one another. Just as we go, I know some of you are looking forward to lunch. Here we go. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with the power by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Off you go. If I throw away my fear and 
Right. And I'll fall right on the right of your side 